following message is presented by Community Gospel Church in Bremen, Indiana. It is our great privilege to share this ministry with you. We in no way intend for this to be a replacement for the local church. It is our prayer that this would serve as a resource to help make Jesus Christ known in our congregation and other congregations gathering across the world. For more information about Community Gospel Church, visit www.communitygospelchurch.com. Uh, If you would, uh, open up your Bible or electronic device that has a Bible on it. We are in Romans uh, chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and we're going to look at the first five verses. Um, It's kind of just a standalone message uh, as uh, we're closing up this year. We're done with Advent. We spent four weeks there. Advent just means coming, so we talked about Jesus coming and then um, the coming again, and then um, next year, we're going to start Exodus uh, next week. Uh, super excited for Exodus. It's a fantastic book. It's been uh, a lot of fun to study, and, and prayerfully, it will be the same um, for you. Uh, I don't know how your uh, day is going, or your week, or your year, but let me just break down my morning uh, this morning for you real quickly. Uh, I got up this morning. Everything was good. Everything was fine, and then um, a hinge broke on the table, and then um, the, uh, the shower decided that it would leak. Um, and then I thought, oh, okay, this is just a home issue thing, not a big deal. Um, I'll go to church and everything will be great at church. And uh, we've been struggling and fighting with our, our AC here um, for, you know, the past 17 years. <laughs> so that's going on. So I just let God handle that. And, and then um, this light bulb over here decided that it wanted to flash uh, and we can't have people, you know, going into seizures in, in church. So we changed that light bulb. And then, um, and, and I just started thinking to myself, what else could go wrong today? Like, what else could happen? What else could, could take place and, and go wrong? And then I just realized it's kind of par for the course for the past two years, right? Like, we feel like pinballs uh, in regards to everything that's transpiring. And it's a little frustrating, uh, but I'm fine. I have peace. <laughs> everything's good. Every, everything's fine. Um, and this always happens whenever we, we preach God's word, whenever we teach God's word. I always have to be really careful on what, what we pick because I'm like, that's what's going to transpire in this week. So Bethany and I always crack up because every time we preach on marriage, it's like, we're just like, and it's not her, it's me. I, I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but this is so fitting. This, this, this. This passage of scripture is so fitting as we close up this year and as we look to the next year. I just, I just want to make sure that, that we're getting um, these words. And, and let's, just, let's just look at them. Romans chapter 5, verse, verse 1. Paul says, therefore, <clears throat> since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But we read the Bible so flippantly sometimes, and we miss the words that are on the page. It says, we have been justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this glorious grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. It's like all the themes of Advent rolled into one passage of Scripture. More than that, and I don't know if you can say this or not, this morning. And my prayer is that when we're done with this, that you could say this, not just as we close up this year, but as we move into the next, that we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope never puts the children of God to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. What a powerful passage of scripture that is. Now, if you're here and you're confused because you don't even know what the book of Romans is all about, let me just give you a real crash course on how we got to chapter five. Uh, Romans is penned by uh, the apostle Paul. Paul is uh, essentially a man who was persecuting the church and came to uh, populate the church because Jesus, the risen Messiah, uh, meets him on a road and he asks, why are you persecuting me? 
And he writes this letter to a church that is in Rome. And it's interesting, he's never visited that church when he wrote the letter, but he wanted to come to them. He writes from a really corrupt place called Corinth, actually, which is just filled with sexual perversion. And they have uh, so many problems in their self. But in about 57 years after Jesus died, right before the Emperor Nero is going to take control. Believers aren't experiencing real, true persecution yet, but a season of peace. And it's very interesting to read that because we are in the same situation right now. We have this relative peace, but it just feels like something's going to break. And so here, Paul hears of this Roman church and he knows that, that, that something's going to happen. And so he says they need a real strong dose of biblical doctrine, of biblical truth, of what it, it means to know God through faith in Christ. And so he writes probably the most clear, systematic presentation of the gospel in the entire Bible. When people come to know Jesus Christ through faith, I don't put them in John, I put them in Romans. Because it just clarifies what it means to know Jesus Christ as Savior. For example, in Romans, you see uh, what it means to be right with God. You see how to live out that righteousness in your everyday life as a believer. It's sound doctrine in results of sound living. So it's this balance of knowing God's truth with your mind and living God's truth out with your life. That was his whole prayer in writing Romans to these people. And that's why we're preaching it here today, is that you would know what this looks like as you live it out. As you are sitting here today and you're learning about it now, we ask how to live it out. Chuck Swindoll says it like this. When Paul writes Romans, this union between doctrine and life illustrates for believers absolute importance of both what we believe and what we know to be true and how to live out those beliefs. Does our day-to-day -day life mirror? Ask yourself this question as we start looking at the closing of 2021, moving into 2022. This is a good question for us to ponder. Does my day-to-day -day life mirror the beliefs that I hold true in my heart by what the Bible declares, or am I in a constant battle with being a hypocrite? So we have to pause and take heed. We learn and apply this doctrine as well. And here, we're going to unpack the two blessings of justification. In other words, what does it mean for us to be saved? What do we mean by the word saved? Well, if you jump to Romans 10, it says, if you confess your sins, you don't have to turn there, that... Uh, this repentance of sin and turning to Christ the Messiah calls us children of God through faith. If, if I've done that, what does it look like in my everyday life? Let's look at the first two verses. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, pause, have you been justified by faith? A lot of people sit in church pews, think they're believers, not believers. I didn't, I didn't ask if you're an ethical or if you're a moral person, okay? I asked, have you made a declaration of repentance of sin and claimed Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross covers your sin, come into a relationship with God through faith in Christ? If you don't know what that means, there's a little white book in front of you. It's called The Gospel. Open that up while I'm talking. You will not offend me at all. And read through that and trust Christ today. So many of us have made that decision Okay, so we wonder, what does it look like to live this justification out every day? Well, Paul says in the first two verses, that means that you have peace with God and access to his grace. And we read that so flippantly, right? Like, that's, that's a huge truth. In the previous chapter of Romans, chapter 4, Paul talked about a man named Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons have Father Abraham, and I'm one of them, so are you. And I knew somebody was going to finish it, all right? <clears throat> and if you're like, I don't know that song, don't worry. It's okay. All right? <clears throat> we have our own sin problems here at Community Gospel. <clears throat> and he talks about Abraham. And when Paul talks about Abraham, he talks about how Abraham could have boasted about himself in the Old Testament text, but instead he credited his righteousness for believing and trusting in God in all things. Do you believe and trust in God in all things? Because of Abraham's faith, 
Paul says he has peace with God and access to his grace. The same thing that Abraham had is the same thing that we can have. And what I've seen in the past year and what I am worried about, I won't say worried, concerned about in 2022 is that believers lose our peace with God and the ability to access his grace because our emotion takes over and our logic goes flying out the window. And here's what he says. He says, let's define, first of all, justified by faith. Circle that word justified. Justified means you are pronounced or treated as righteous. For believers, justification is an act of God where he both forgives sin and he does this thing called imputing righteousness upon us. That's a big word. Righteousness comes to us through faith in Christ. This is not something you work for, but you are in Christ through faith, One, declared righteous, and two, you are free from the guilt of sin through faith in Christ. So, justification implemented means that as I wake up every single day in 2022, at the end of 2021, I am first of all needing to be assured of my salvation, and God does that through faith in Christ. You need to know who you are. I am a child of God. Through faith in Christ, I am a child of God. You need to say it to yourself every single morning. Number two, because I am a child of God, I am motivated for good works and spiritual growth. That is my motivation. If John 3, 16 is true, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If that is true, which we know it is, then God loves me so much that he does not want me to stay where I'm at, but he wants me to grow. And I know you hate this word, but 2022 is going to come. You need to change. I know you don't like to change words, so I'll give you another one. You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then your body follows suit. This is spiritual growth. Three, also, see, so two is everyday life. One is knowledge. Three is hope in heaven. Paul's going to talk about this in a second. This is my future home. This world, not my home. Just passing through. I'm a foreigner. The older I get, the more I feel like a foreigner, right? Okay? So there's no ritual or sacrament or deed that can make us worthy of righteousness of Christ. It is only by his grace in response to our faith that God has credited holiness of his son to us. A story is told about a man who bought a Rolls Royce. Really nice car. Has problems with his car. As he has problems with his car, he calls Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce flies a mechanic over, sees, works on his car, fixes his car. Flies the mechanic back. He calls the company, he says, I never got a bill, it's been six months, I'm just curious, how much do I owe you? The person at uh, the, uh, the department looks at them and says, we have no record that a mechanic ever worked on your car. That's justification. That there is no record of your wrongs in Christ. It says in in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by faith because of this. It is only by his grace, God's grace, in in our response to our faith that God credited holiness of his son to us. Put it this way, anything that God would do for Christ, as a child of God, he will do for you. And so, what that means is, that gives me, and I hope it gives you, peace. And if you don't have peace, maybe you don't have Jesus. I said a smile on my face. Since we have been justified by faith, move in the verse. We now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Translated in the Greek, stop freaking out. Amen? Knock it off. So many of us are looking at it and we're thinking to ourselves, the sky is falling. No, the sky is not falling. The sky is going to come down and absorb us. And we'll be caught up in that cloud. Better translation than what I just said. Let us have peace with God or let us keep having peace in the sense of enjoying peace with God. Circle that word peace. Peace means to bind together that which has been separated. Since you have been justified by faith, you have peace with God. 
As believers, you have inner rest, well-being, harmony with God because he has reconciled you through faith in Christ. And as believers, we do not make this peace. God has already done it. We simply enjoy that peace. And so uh, Isaiah tells us a little bit uh, of this. He says in Isaiah 32, verse 17, the work of righteousness will be peace and the service of righteousness, quietness, and confidence forever. Now notice, Isaiah talks about a time that is going to come. We know that time has come in Christ. Peace is the opposite of war, meaning as believers, God has nothing against us. Life is just a battle. Being justified by faith means we no longer are in that battle against God. The opposite is true. God now fights for you. If there is no peace in your life, it's not on God, it's on you. If if you are experiencing a season of rest, of unrest, that is not on God. God, it looks at you and he says, maybe you've caused that. Maybe you're too consumed with the world. Maybe you're too uh, uh, dealing with things that, that you need to give over control of. There's a reason why a lot of people don't come to the last Sunday of the year. (laughs) Verse 2, being justified by faith, having peace with God through Christ means we have access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. Not that we will stand, but we now stand. Paul says it like this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, for through him we have confidence We have access in one spirit to the Father. Ephesians 3 verse 12 says, we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. What is your prayer for 2022? I would pray that it would be confident access and boldness to enter the throne of God to ask anything. And he will look at you and grant it. I love the acronym of grace. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Meaning believers are permanently fixed like a boat to the dock. God's grace is the dock providing security. We cannot be severed from God's loving acceptance of us in Christ. Everything that God would do for his son, he will do for you. No sin can separate our position of standing firm in God's grace, for we are justified once and for all time. One commentator says it like this. He says, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God as our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. What do I want in 2022? I want to have peace with God and I want to access his grace. God looks at you and says, done. You do it. Now, verse three, he continues. Because when you have this, here's what's going to happen. Every time I'm maturing in my relationship with God, it seems like problems pop up, right? The shower stops working, and the drawers stop working, and we just keep fumbling with all this material possessions, right? And I'm just like, sell it all, amen? Just get rid of it. Like, let's, 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 let's just let it go. And I understand my suffering is not as big as other people's suffering, but I have problems sometimes having the ability to rejoice in my suffering, amen? And so here's what Paul says. Pastor Paul, always given a, a really difficult word, he says, rejoice in tribulation. Go ahead and go to that next slide. Uh, My my clicker just um, also died, which is par for the course for today. Okay. (laughs) Verse three, believers enjoy a peace with God, being justified by faith. We rejoice in hope of being God's, in God's presence. So here's the question. Next slide. How do we as believers rejoice in difficulties of life? This is what you want to know, right? Because 2021 wasn't easy. 2022 might not be easy. But may, let, me, let, me just, let me just rephrase that again. 2022 could be easier if you change your perception. Okay? Paul says rejoice. That word means exalt, sing over them, over suffering, which means affliction, distresses, diseases, death, pressures, problems, persecutions, All the above, okay? James chapter one, verse two says, you consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Paul, how do I do that? How do I rejoice in sufferings looking for this hope that you talk of, which is the expectation of a future glory in heaven with Jesus? Well, number one, go to the next slide. 
I have to know, first and foremost, whatever I'm going through right now, ready for this? Whatever you're going through right now is producing in you endurance. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. What happens a lot of times is people come to know the Lord through faith in Christ, and we go, man, you're going to have your best life ever, right? Man, you're going to be loaded. You're going to have so much money. It's going to be coming out of your ears. You're going to have no problems. Everything's going to be great. Whoever told you those things needs to be tormented in the pit of hell because it's not true. What's true is when I come to know Jesus, this world hates it. And so that suffering comes naturally. If there's anything normal for believers, it's suffering. We get this. And if you're not suffering, then maybe you're not uh, pursuing sanctification hard enough. Just throwing that out there. Paul and Barnabas, though, okay, Barnabas is his right-hand man, preach in several cities with many becoming believers facing immediate persecution. Acts chapter 14, verse 21, it says, Paul and Barnabas returned to these areas, strengthening the disciples, encouraging them to remain true in the faith. What was Paul and Barnabas' main point in preaching truth to the disciples? It was the previous verse, Romans chapter 1, 5, verse 1 and 2. You have peace with God and access to his grace in these sufferings. So the key that Paul learns in going through sufferings was to learn to rejoice because he knew that endurance, another word for that is perseverance, is being built. In other words, if he had the ability to face this difficult situation, he could experience another difficult situation. There's an old commercial uh, Nike used to do. It, it, it was called One More. You can just do one more. Just do one more. Just do one more. And that's exactly what Paul's saying. Just one more. Just one more. Just do one more. This suffering comes, just do another one. It was funny. As I was um, sitting there on my third uh, trial and tribulation this morning, I thought to myself, one more. Just throw another log on the fire. Let's see what happens, right? For believers, we need to know this morning that our suffering does not deny the reality of God's love. You need to know that. Whatever it is that you are suffering with right, right now, first of all, number one, God cares. Number two, you need to know that his love has not expired in that suffering. If anything, the fact that you are suffering affirms the love of God. The character, quality of perseverance and endurance isn't an end in itself but it is a step in the sanctification process. It is a step that strengthens our hope. You gotta get to the point where you just love the suffering. You gotta get to a point where you're just like, man, this is good because I know that God is working. So if, if I'm suffering, God is producing in me endurance, and look at the next thing, go to the next slide. That endurance is changing my character. What's the one thing that Christians need in 2022? A change of character. Because we look too much like the world. We look just like them. We talk like them. And here, Paul says, your suffering is producing in you endurance that is producing character. This is maturing your relationship with God. It is finding you approved as a result of testing. Now, track with me here. A person with character is known for inward qualities, not outward appearances. Praise the Lord. So there is a progression. To suffer is to endure, and to endure is to build your character. Suffering is like pressure that was put on carbon producing diamonds. Uh, go to the next slide. Interesting. Uh, one commentator says it like this. He says, we rejoice as believers in sufferings not because pain in itself is good, but because it is the engraver's tool which God creates lines of beauty on the life. That's good. That'll preach. Exhibit A. Okay? Okay. So here, we persevere. Whatever your trial is, whatever you're going through right now, you have to understand that as you hold fast to the peace of God that passes all understanding, and as you access his grace, you are being conformed to the image of God. Your character is being transformed, and God is producing character within you, conforming you to the likeness of his son. That's reason to rejoice. If we endure and we see God's work through all of our difficulties, the result is an increased faith and hope and love. Difficulties of life are not random or meaningless or wasted when you trust in the Lord. You are called to rejoice. 
enduring suffering because it is increasing your endurance and strengthening your character. And it all boils down to hope. Go ahead and circle that word hope. This is really interesting. This is where Paul culminates. Go to the next slide. This is where our character produces hope. Our character produces hope. I love this word hope. It's just, it's just so good. It's so rich and it's so full. John MacArthur says it like this. Go to the next slide. He says, the more a believer pursues holiness, and, and this is my prayer for you in 2022, that you would pursue holiness. That you would pursue passionately after the Lord just as he pursues passionately after you. And the more you become persecuted and the more you become troubled, the greater will be your hope as you are sustained through it all by God's powerful grace. In the Old Testament Hebrew, the word hope means confidence and security. In the New Testament Greek, hope builds off that Old Testament passage and it gives a fuller picture. Hope is the confident expectation and assurance of God's promises based off of a sure foundation, which is faith in Christ, for which we wait with joy and full confidence of our heavenly home. Biblical hope is not a feeling. It is a reality, and it's cemented in this word, that God always keeps his promises. If you go and you study Job in the Old Testament, Job constantly points back uh, to God to, as, as Satan is tempting him. And he says, he says, God's promises all come true. They never fail. Maybe, just maybe, in your suffering and in the trials and tribulations that you have problem, the promises of God, and tell that problem that all those promises come true. To accept the gospel means our hope is no longer filled with doubt, but it is grounded in God's word, his character, and his finished work of Christ. Paul says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we just got done reading um, the book by Sinclair Ferguson on 1 Corinthians 13, which was fantastic. And he says the same thing. He says, faith and hope and love are at the heart of a believer's life. And our relationship with God begins with faith, and it helps us to realize that we're delivered from our past by Christ's death. Hope grows as we learn all God has in mind for us, and it gives us the promise of a future. And God's love fills our lives and gives us the ability to reach others. So what? So since we have sincere faith and hope and love, those are the characteristics of our life. Are those the characteristics of your life? If I were to ask somebody what defines you, would they say he's a faithful man? He's a hopeful man. He's a loving man. Would they say he, she is a faithful woman? She is a hopeful woman. She is a loving woman. Or would they say you're a pessimist and you're constantly looking at the glass being half empty? As believers, we're not pessimists. We're optimists because we know what our future holds. And you want to join the optimist club? Come on, come on, Right? And so here what we see is we must guard against these these negative things that come and tackle our mind and our thoughts. And we have to realize that we can be more than conquerors with the struggle of devastating feelings. It's time for us as believers to start speaking back into our problems the promises of God. Right? There's too many deflated Christians in this world. We need to be built up believers because of what God's word says. We can't avoid or fear those expectations that will cultivate in us a godly character. William Jenkins says it like this. He says, hope is the mother of patience. I used to hate praying for patience, and now I realize maybe I should pray for some more. Paul says it like this, very end of verse 5. He says, hope doesn't put us to shame. Why? Why would he say that? Because our hope is in God's promises that never disappoint us by being fulfilled. We've been talking about the Christmas story. We've been talking about, uh, we're going to talk about Exodus uh, next year. All of these things, all these promises of God all come true. When our hope is filled with the Lord, his word, his wills, and his ways, we're absolutely assured that he will fulfill all that he has promised to do. You just need to be still and wait. The first hope Paul mentioned in verse 2 is the one that primarily looks to the future. When we will share God's glory, this hope, maturing product of a life trusting God, focuses on more immediate experience of God's love. So what? So hope for the believer in Jesus includes a future worth rejoicing over and a present that will not disappoint either. The Bible says it like this, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Just as 
Roman believers had peace and access to God's presence, so do you. My prayer as you end this year would know that, that you have access to God's peace and his presence in all things. And sometimes the reason that you don't feel it is because you don't believe it. And as believers, we're not called to always feel it. We're called to know it, and to know it takes faith. It's the Holy Spirit who's filled our hearts with God's love and continues to encourage us as we hope in God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. God anointed us, and he set his seal of ownership on us. You are the Lord's. And he has put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. That's good news as we close this year and we look to the next year. And my question is, are you going to place your faith and hope in the promises of God? Or are you going to place your faith and hope in the secular society that we live in? Go back to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Let these words sink over you. Therefore... Since we have been justified by faith, have you been justified by faith? And I think so many of you have. You need to know as we close this year and look forward to the next that you have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And through him, you have obtained access by faith into this grace and you stand in it now. Not, for, not in eternity, it happens now. The gospel is for today. More than that, whatever it is you're facing, rejoice in those sufferings, knowing that God is doing a work in you. He's producing endurance in you and that uh, endurance that is being produced is producing character in you and that character in you is producing hope and hope never will put you to shame because God's love has been poured into the hearts through the whole Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Amen? Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, what a word as we close 2021. <clears throat> what a truth as we look at that powerful passage of Scripture that Paul pens to believers who are uh, at the moment experiencing peace, but, but persecution's coming, and God, we see it on the horizon. It's not, it's not fun to talk about, but, but we know that that. It's coming. And you know what, God? We say, bring it on. 2022, bring it on. We're going to keep gathering as believers. We're going to keep believing in faith. We're going to keep trusting in the gospel. We're going to keep having a defense for the truth uh, of Scripture because we know all the promises that you have given to us prove true. So help us, help us, God, to be ready. As, as we... Uh, encounter people in pain as we um, speak to ourselves in problems. Help us to be prepared to always give that answer. We need to be well equipped. And so we pray as we look to 2022 that you would help us constantly be fixated, our eyes focused on the word and what the word says. That we would constantly take every thought captive and put into uh, our, uh, practice prayer. Whether that be here uh, when we're gathered or, or just driving in our cars or with uh, normal people. That we wouldn't be ashamed to call upon the name of the Lord. God, help us to be sanctified and set apart because of the gift that we have received. We thank you so much that you have called us your own, that you've called us out of darkness into glorious light. We thank you and praise you for a fantastic year, and we look forward to the next with great anticipation. Maybe, just maybe, God, if, if, if you could, could you come back next year? That'd be great. We would love to be in your physical presence in 2022. But until that day comes, we're going to be faithful and just. And we're going to strive to be sanctified and set apart for the gospel of Jesus Christ, making your son known near and far. And all God's people said, amen. Let's stand and sing together. Thank you for listening to the Community Gospel Church podcast. If you would like to support this ministry financially, simply log on to communitygospelchurch.com and click the Contribute tab.